Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Harika. So as a part of RE framework playlist, till now we have seen the complete understanding on the state mission initialization. So now uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about everything uh, like what are different transitions and what are the different elements that are there inside the transitions, how we can switch from one state mission to another state mission with the help of transitions. And also we are going to cover the remaining other three state missions, which is get transaction data, process transaction and end process. So if you are someone who are here on my channel for the first time and if you are looking up for the RE framework videos uh, on initialization queues and assets. So to give you a quick guide of where you can find them, just head to my channel and here you can find the RE framework playlist and the playlist on the queues. So you can get a very clear understanding on what is RE framework and how we can use it and what are the different activities that are using in in it all settings and what does each activity does a very clear understanding about in it all settings activities and you can also see what are assets how we can define assets in orchestrator and how we can access those assets using the config file in RE framework and having said that you can also have a very clear understanding about queues and how we can manage queues, how we can add queues by using different activities that are available. So now, without any delay, I'm just heading to initialization part. Till now, we have seen in this previous videos of RD framework, like how we can read the config file and how we can access assets in the queues using them. And now we, we have also seen in it all applications in those videos. So now I'm going to head Let's suppose if there is any exception that happened in the try block of initialization, then there would be some exception that has to be caught. So here I'm defining that exception, which is a system exception. And in this case, so we'll head into transition and see how this actually works. So now if you see, we have two different conditions. So I'm going to show you how this actually works. So this is the transition. I'm just double clicking on it. So if you see, we have a source called as initialization. That means this transitions source, like it has rooted from initialization part and we have a condition here. Let's suppose if it is successful, that means there is no system exception. If system exception is nothing, then you can define the activities that you want to be executed under this block, which is action block. And the destination goes to get transaction data, which is the next state machine. And let's suppose if the system exception is not nothing, that means it has encountered some system exception, then this log message would be whatever the activities that you want to be executed. You can just place it over here in the actions and the destination would go for the end process. And let's suppose if you wanted any of the transition that you want to add, let's see how you can do that. If you see you have add shared trigger transition, just click on it. And let's suppose if you wanted go to go back to initialization then i can select that and you can see like or you can define let's suppose i wanted to loop through the initialization because i'm already in the initialization so i would say if retry number is less than two i wanted to retry and in that case, it would retry, go back to initialization. So based on your condition, your requirement, you can put some condition and whatever the destination you wanted to go for, I mean, the next run, next state mission that your process should go for, you can define it over here. So that's how you can customize this transitions based on your requirement. So I believe you have got a clear understanding of what is a transition and how you can use it in order to customize the process flow from one state mission to another state mission. So after that, we have get transaction data. So we have seen if there is any exception, then, then directly it will go to the end process. Otherwise, it will go to if there, if there is no system exception, then it will come to get transaction data. And here we have the one which I have defined just now. And now um, in get transaction data, we will see what are the different activities that we are using and how we can process it in the get transaction data. So we have the first activity called as should stop. So if you just observe when we are running the process either through tray or through orchestrator, we have uh, we have option to stop, pause, resume all these options. So whenever you click on stop, 
then in such case the process wouldn't stop immediately in such case this this flow actually works if you click on the kill then the process would start abrupt stop abruptly like wherever it is executing it will stop at that point so let's see what actually happens when you click on stop so then it would come here it would check if the stop signal is activated so the output of this is should stop if that is true then it will come here and the log message would be executed and transaction item is assigned to nothing and in such case it will go to end process so we are defining that the transaction let's go and see what is the so in this case let's go to this transaction and if you just observe here we are seeing transaction item is nothing so in that case it will go directly to end process so that's what here we are forcibly applying over get transaction data so that's what we are forcibly assigning to the transaction item which will end the process once after you click on the stop so that's what it's happening here and now if the stop is not there then what will be the flow so let's get into the workflow so before to which let's see what are the arguments that we are passing over here so we have transaction number so let's suppose we have a queue of items so whatever the item that is processing at that particular point of time we are using that transaction number here and we have uh, read all the items from the config sheet so all those things we have loaded it in a dictionary in the form of a dictionary so that will be passed here and we have out transaction item which is a uh, output of the transaction item like once after we read from the queue so that is a queue item and we have field one field two id data so these are like whenever we are reading it from the queue we can use these as our parameters in order to process further so these will be coming out of this uh, workflow that's why we have defined it as an output variables output argument so you can just check the directions over here which is input output something like that and now so if you are have already seen the video on queue we have seen one example there where we are using the dispatcher which is used to load the items into the queue so this dispatcher once after it runs and load the item into the queue in the performer part we have to retrieve the items in order to process them further so this is how we will do get transaction item is nothing but get queue item this is an activity which is used to get each queue item at a time so here we have to define the queue name and whatever the items that we are retrieving we are using storing it in an argument called out transaction item so that's what you have to define here because uh, if the folder path is default we have already connected so it's not required and if you have any unique reference you can just provide it here and after that once after we retrieve the item let's suppose you have five items in the queue and the five items are processed and there is nothing to process again then in such case uh, out transaction is not nothing that means we still have items it's not nothing then in such case we will proceed with that but if it's nothing then we will directly uh, we wouldn't assign any values if it's not nothing then we will go ahead and we will assign based on our requirement we can customize it these values based on our requirement so let's suppose if you wanted to take this field one as like uh, something from your uh, queue like you can use specific content and you can define that value into your queue item value of the queue item so once after we <coughs> excuse me so once after we get those values we would be using them as an output variables into our process so these values we will be using them as an output variables into our process transaction so here we if we are having the values then in such case then it will go to the process transaction new transaction go to the process transaction let me just go to the transition and show you clearly <coughs> so if transaction item is not nothing that means we are the queue is still not empty then it will go to the process transaction 
but if it's empty then we will say process finished due to no more transaction data and we will end the process so that's how this transition is defined so we are now left with process transaction so in this case the process transaction is defined uh, this has a three different transitions that we will be following here <coughs> so we are already defining the business exception as nothing and here we will be passing the transaction item and the config so let's see what we can place it inside the process transaction so whatever the workflows that are there in the in your process those workflows you can place is place in the state mission of process so based on this you can let me just show you here so let's suppose if there is any system exception or business exception that occurs inside the process workflow so initially we are defining business exception as nothing but if there is any business exception that you define inside the process then in that case it would come here and it would say it will uh, assign the exception which is <coughs> if you just observe here we are assigning exception to the business exception so that exception will be uh, taken into consideration so if you just see here let me just add how you can assign business exception is so you can just define here like what are the type of exception you can't edit it once after you uh, take the exception there so you can just take the exception from here and you can just define it over this place so which will shows the type of the exception over here and after that you can also see uh, like if you wanted to assign system exception or business exception let's say here we have assigned the business exception so you have different types like uh, argument exception null reference exception io exception invalid exception hmm. I'm not sure why this is not coming up. So we have multiple types of exceptions over here. You can just um i believe it will be there in it's not coming up Okay, I think we've already assigned that could be the reason it's not coming. Let me just try that way. Yes. So we can just see that we can assign the business rule exception that way. And uh, after which you can just drop the activities that whatever you wanted to take it here. So here I have defined as system exception is equal to exception, something like that. And then based on which you can take it to the next flow let me just show you how we how we have defined the transitions here so let's suppose there is no issue that has happened in the workflow then in such case we will go to the success 
so system exception is nothing and business exception is nothing then we will go to the next transaction item which is get transaction data let's suppose if there is a system exception then in such case we will go back and do the initialization but in in next time when we are doing the initialization we will not load the config why because we have already seen here by this time the, the config is already loaded and it has the values when we are loading the config we can get it only one time that means when we are doing it in the first run that means config is nothing but by this time the config already had some value so that's why we don't run it again so we will just come to initialization and we will go to init all applications we will try to in initialize the applications again after which we have business exception so if there is any business exception then uh, we will not retry it again then we will leave that particular transaction item and we will go back to getting and processing the next transaction data so that's how uh, we have processed the different transitions using the process transaction and now later final we have pro end process so in the end process we will do things like closing all applications clearing cache on all these things so that's how uh, we have seen the end-to-end -end workflow of how re framework operates we have seen all the activities each and every activity we have seen uh, how, uh, the config file and we've seen every other thing that is involved in re framework i hope this is clear for you if you have any questions please do comment out in the comment section and i would try to reach out and answer your questions and also in the next videos we will see uh, a small project uh, uh, completely like the dispatcher and the performer right from how we will start from the scratch by using re framework and how we will load the items into the queue and how we can access the assets and the queues and how we can process the workflow using the queues and the re framework so let's see that in the next video and till then uh, i believe uh, you you have find this video useful to all of you so if you find it useful then do like and share it with your friends and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching